Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage His Excellency Nikos Anastasiades, President of the Republic of Cyprus. Honorary guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear Damon, Thank you for your kind invitation to address the distinguished audience of the 2016 Concordia Summit organized in partnership with the Atlantic Council. Given the time constraints, I will proceed with my remarks without further ado. Dear friends, I arrived in New York following an informal meeting of the 27 leaders of the European Union in Bratislava where uh, we discussed uh, the future of our Union following the decision of the United Kingdom to leave the EU. We have decided to embark on a process of reflection in order to find a way to address many challenging faces the European Union and which our citizens expect us to meet. We have agreed to react uh, visibly and quickly in addressing this uh, through concrete ideas and initiatives. Allow me also to underline that we all agree that our power lies in our unity. The European Union is the greatest example of pooling sovereignty at the global level. Despite the difficulties it is faced with, it has managed to maintain peace, stability and prosperity for over 60 years in Europe, created an open and competitive market, abolished internal borders and seeks to be able to influence the global agenda. There are the core strengths of the European Union and this is uh, where we need to build the trust of the European citizens once again. I'm convinced that Europe is trying to adapt to the new environment, as it did many times in the past. And this is why the European project serves a guide to all, especially those facing problems like my country. Distinguished friends, Cyprus, belonging in a region where peace and stability are the most uh, scarce commodities is exerting intense efforts to find a solution to the 42 years old Cyprus problem. We are cautiously optimistic that conditions may soon prevail that will enable us to reach a comprehensive settlement. My aim remains simple and clear. To end the unacceptable status quo and reach a functional and comprehensive settlement, one that will enhance even further Cyprus' regional role and which will contribute to the stability and prosperity of the region. A viable and functional solution to the Cyprus problem in line with the European key values and principles, a solution that would uh, maintain Cyprus independent foreign policy, in Cyprus independent policy, excuse me, a solution that will safeguard the human rights and fundamental freedoms of all Cypriots. Dear friends, we have just concluded an incentive, intensive phase of negotiations through holding eight meetings on the time period of 23rd August 14th September 2016. Despite the important progress achieved on the chapters of governance, European Union, economy, property, there is still a considerable number of issues on which there are divergences. In particular, differences that related to the fundamental chapters of property, territory security, as well as the implementation of the settlement thus from day one and its financial dimensions. However, 
I want to assure that I am determined to continue working tirelessly and with the same intensified pace in order to reach a settlement as soon as possible, even within 2016, despite the fact that this is an ambitious goal. This is based on my conviction that if both sides engage constructively and with respect to each side's uh, sensitivities, the international law, the European acquis, then we could resolve our outstanding differences with our guiding doctrine being the need to be well prepared and present to the people a clear plan with no constructive ambiguities and no deficiencies that will jeopardize its implementation. In this respect, Turkey's contribution in concrete terms is vital and we count on our partners and friends, such as the United States, to relay to Ankara the value of a constructive approach, particularly on the critical issues that uh, will determine the final outcome of the intense phase of negotiations that we are engaged in. Distinguished friends, in parallel with the ongoing negotiations, my government is also concentrating its efforts on our ambitious reform agenda, which aspires to lay the foundations for long-term sustainable growth and improve the business environment and further attract foreign investments. This is all the more applicable since the Cyprus economy is now emerging out of its most challenging period to date. We have managed to successfully complete the implementation of the macroeconomic adjustment program that was agreed with the EU institutions and the IMF in March 2013. The combination of the resilience of the productive sectors of our economy with a very determined effort of economic reform and fiscal consolidation were key to this success, which is evident in a number of encouraging developments, such as the ongoing positive reviews by international rating agencies, a decline in the state's borrowing rates, the rapidly increasing number of investment funds registered in Cyprus, with net direct investment rising to a record of 4.7 billion in 2015, and of course the forecast for growth in excess of 2.5 in 2016. Moreover, the government policies and measures have resulted in the stabilization of the financial system and with a restructured and fully recapitalized banking sector, Cyprus has managed to access the international capital markets much earlier than any other program country. Ladies and gentlemen, following on what I have already mentioned, it is important to note that the gas reserves discovered within our exclusive economic zone, but also in our neighborhood, worth billions of euros, are destined to transform Cyprus into an important international energy hub. Cyprus has what it takes to become an important gas supplier and energy hub, not only for the neighborhood, but also contributing to the European Union's emergency security. And this is why we are following a regional interactive approach in our foreign policy orientation. Within the framework of initiatives undertaken by the Cyprus government to strengthen cooperation in our region, aimed at achieving stability, peace and prosperity, we have begun a series of active initiatives for convening a series of trilateral meetings with our southern neighborhood partners at the level of the heads of government. Our goal for the coming months is uh, the future upgrading of these collaborations by promoting, amongst other, specific projects of mutual benefit and organizing specific and target-oriented ministerial meetings 
and summits. Ladies and gentlemen, our relations with the United States are of a strategic importance. Besides the significant strengthening our diplomatic relations and uh, working together in addressing global challenges and asymmetric threats as uh, terrorism and trafficking, we are also working on building more tangible economic relations. A bilateral USA-Cyprus dialogue is in progress, addressing many issues of economic cooperation. We have seen the first significant US investments in Cyprus and will try to facilitate more. Further, given today's global and international environment developments in Europe and, and in Europe and Middle East are of great importance for the United States. We cannot successfully tackle the challenges that we are all facing today without the close cooperation between the European Union, the United States and other global players. In this regard, Cyprus as a pillar of stability and predictability in the Eastern Mediterranean is playing its role and is ready to provide any further assistance deemed necessary. Concurrently, a solution of the Cyprus problem can, among others, become a paradigm of how the adoption of the reconciliatory stance can contribute to the resolution of difficult international issues, prevail over mistrust and serve as an example of peaceful coexistence between different communities. And this would be to the best interest for Europe and its future, as it would end the oxymoron of having one of its member states being forcibly divided with the presence of foreign troops on its soil, enhancing Cyprus' role as a security provider in the region. That is why we have persistently argued that the future of Cyprus is tied and linked with the future of Europe and uh, as we recently decided in Bratislava during the EU informal head of states meeting, quote, in the aftermath of the wars and deep divisions on our continent, the EU secured peace, democracy and enabled our countries to prosper. Many countries and regions outside still only strive for such achievements. We are determined to make a success of the EU with 27 member states building on this joint history. Thank you for your assistance. His Excellency will now be joined by Damon Wilson, Executive Vice President, Atlantic Council, for a brief question and answer session. Mr. President, thank you very much. Thank you. Fantastic. Please, please join me. <clears throat> what a terrific set of remarks. I'm Damon Wilson, Executive Vice President of the Atlantic Council. It is a real pleasure to welcome uh, President of Cyprus, Anastasiadis, here and to partner with Concordia. Uh, for this session. It's a particular pleasure for me to have this brief conversation with you, Mr. President, for two reasons. Um, first, about over 45 years ago, my grandparents lived on a unified island of Cyprus. And to hear the president of Cyprus stand here today and talk about the prospects of a settlement, as you said in your own words, perhaps even in 2016, this is the potential of a historic moment. So that's the second reason why we're pleased to partner with Concordia and the Atlantic Council to have this conversation because it spotlight, spotlights leadership. We are where we are today in the negotiations on Cyprus, in part because some of the tough decisions that you've taken as president uh, and some of the, the important uh, leadership that you're providing in a very difficult region. So we are here talking when we have the opportunity to move from talking about the Cyprus problem to the idea of Cyprus as a pillar of stability, as a bridge builder for what is a very challenging region in the Eastern Mediterranean. So I first wanted to ask you about, you're here in New York this week, an intense set of talks uh, here related to the Cyprus set of issues with the Secretary General of the United Nations, Vice President Biden's participating in some of these talks. Can you give us a feel for what are some of the key final issues that you have in the agenda and are advancing this week here in New York? 
We're trying to evaluate uh, what we have uh, succeeded till now, whilst at the same time we have to program the next uh, intensive uh, phase of negotiations because, uh, as I have already mentioned, uh, we have uh, succeeded uh, a great uh, progress, but still uh, core issues are remain to be answered. And uh, the most uh, remaining issues are uh, depend on Turkey's will. That's why our efforts is uh, to motivate uh, our friends and allies in order to exercise their influence to have a progress on this, uh, in this respect. Uh, um, trying to pursue Turkey that it is to their best interest as well. We want Turkey in Europe. We like to have a European Turkey. We want to cooperate with Turkey, but uh, not under the today's conditions, with uh, an occupation army, with a viola violation of human rights and so on. And let's hope that uh, the energy incentive is one of the most important nowadays for Turkey as well, in order to give a hand in finding and finalizing a comprehensive solution to the best interest of Greek and Turkish Cypriots. Indeed, I think we're all hoping that energy becomes a reason for cooperation rather than competition in the Eastern Med. Let me just ask you, you put the central issue surrounding what happens with Ankara. So obviously Turkey has been through some very, fairly traumatic events. We've seen uh, the attempted coup uh, in uh, Turkey itself. How has that impacted the dynamic of this uh, set of negotiations? We've heard from the Prime Minister of Turkey in the wake of the coup, um, who, who made some uh, comments about still supporting the prospects of a settlement, uh, but also some cautionary saying this is really the last chance. Uh, so how do you see the, the, what's impacted, what's happened internally in Turkey well, impacting these negotiations? Thank you. We haven't noticed any change of the stand of Turkey. To the contrary, there are some uh, glance of hope out of their recent uh, behavior. Maybe because uh, Erdogan came out stronger out of the crisis. Maybe because he's in control of the army. Maybe because um, the Syrian question has given him the way out and to turn the attention to the um, to the fight against the uh, Kurds. Cyprus, maybe, is one of the success stories, stories he might need in order uh, to face the challenges within Turkey. Let's hope that this evaluation is going to be proved in, as a truth. In these challenging times, we all need a few success stories, and yeah. I'm hoping that this can be one of them. You're here doing intensive diplomacy this week, but fundamentally you're a politician that has uh, been elected and, and sustained support from the people uh, of Cyprus through this process, despite some of the difficult decisions you had to take through the financial crisis. That's part of the key to this equation. The last effort at this, the Anand plan, was defeated in a referendum. How do you keep an eye on the electorate, the Greek Cypriot electorate and the maintaining the support and uh, knowing that this has to pass their test. At the end of the day, enjoy the support of a majority of your electorate. As uh, you might be well aware, I was one of the supporters of the Annan plan. But at the same time, the people voted by 60% against this very plant. So I'm obliged to see what can I do in order to present a solution to the people which will overcome the deficiencies, uh, the um, negative elements of uh, the uh, particular plan. And indeed, we are building on a bizonal, bicommunal uh, basis, the new state of affairs, an evolvement from a unitary state to a federal state. But we are trying to protect the human rights 
because uh, nowadays it has been accepted that the key is one of the key sectors we have to follow in order to be and remain as a modern European country. Therefore, I do believe that uh, these are elements which are giving us the chance to present to the people a new plan with no ambiguities, uh, with no vacants, and um, so to give the people the trust that what we are trying to build is going uh, um, to be not a risky, uh, I mean, uh, um, effort, but uh, the real basis for prosperity and the well-being of all Cypriots. I think you hit on, you know, in any, in any election, issues of prosperity and security hit close and first. So let me turn to that. You mentioned energy, you mentioned the economy. How do you think about the prospects of, of the economy in a post-settlement Cyprus? Where are the opportunities? You're here at the United Nations General Assembly, Assembly which is in New York for the heart of diplomacy, but there's also a lot of economic and financial activity taking place in this city. How is Cyprus going to be positioned to actually present itself attractively, not as a place where investors are afraid to, to put down capital, but will there be new opportunities? Except of uh, the discoveries of hydrocarbons and uh, the prospects out of it, the most important is to take into consideration the geostrategic, the geostrategic position of Cyprus. We are the bridge between uh, Europe, Middle East, North Africa, Asia, I mean, and uh, we are the gate. We have a very friendly tax uh, laws. We are following the common law. We have, and bear in mind, if uh, we can find a solution, the stability we can enjoy, it will be one of the most attractive elements for those uh, who are looking to invest in Cyprus. I do believe that uh, the chances for growth are uh, uncountable. Perhaps in parallel to that, and perhaps as we bring the conversation to a close, what would be your vision for answering the security question for the electorate? How do you think about a security architecture in the Eastern Mediterranean in the wake of a, a settlement to provide the sense of Cyprus as a pillar of stability in a difficult region. You've had an interesting foreign policy reaching out to your neighbors, north, south, east, west, uh, uh, obviously here in the United States and with the European yeah. Union. As I have already mentioned, uh, we are um, enhancing our relations with our neighborhood, with uh, Egypt, Jordan, Israel, I'm underlining Israel, Lebanon, with the Gulf uh, countries, and I do believe that uh, we are surrounded by the Muslim world. If we can manage to find a solution, we are going to be a paradigm of a peaceful coexistence between Muslims and Christians, Christians and Muslims, as we have done for centuries in the past. Unfortunately, our fate is that we are very near to some uh, friendly countries. And the interventions, they gave us a lot of headaches. But uh, I do believe that now we are uh, in the correct process to overcome this problem. Therefore, I do believe that uh, uh, a solution of the Cyprus question is going to be one of the most attractive, uh, bearing in mind of what I have mentioned already, the stability, the um, uh, economic growth, uh, the um, incentives we are giving, uh, the policies we are following, it will give the chance for Cyprus uh, to have a, a tremendous growth and uh, definitely to give our people uh, the chance to live in prosperity and in peace. Thank you. Mr. President, I want to just conclude our, our session here at Concordia. Just by underscoring the gravity, uh, you began by talking about a conflict that has endured for over 40 years and the significance under uh, your leadership uh, with 
uh, working with your uh, Turkish Cypriot counterpart and others in the region to bring this to a close is really the, the offers an incredible prospect for transforming the Eastern Mediterranean and embedding this region more firmly in Europe and the transatlantic community. On behalf of the Atlantic Council and Concordia, I want to thank you for your leadership, your courage, and wish you the best of luck as these negotiations advance. And we hope to be able to welcome you back uh, next year with a, a very interesting story to tell. Thank you very much, Damon. Thank, thank you. you. Please join me. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. And thank you for what you're doing.